Hello, I'm Hilke from the Things Industries. Today I'm going to show you how to deploy the Things stack in your local network. The Things stack can be used for large scale global deployments, such as the Things stack Cloud and the Things stack Community Edition, but it can also be used for small scale local deployments, even for networks without connection to the public internet. One of the things we added in the Things stack version 3.13 is multi architecture Docker builds. This allows us to use Docker to deploy the Think stack on devices with ARM CPUs, such as the Raspberry Pi. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. So what do you need for this? Of course, you'll need a Raspberry Pi. I'm using the Pi 4, but I think it should also work with the Pi 3. You'll need a micro SD card to put into your Raspberry Pi, and you'll need a screen and keyboard for installation. I'll be doing most of the work on my Mac over SSH, but it should also be possible to do these steps on the Pi itself. Your local network should ideally assign a static IP address to your Raspberry Pi, and I would also recommend setting up a DNS record for it. You can do this on a public DNS server, but I did it on the DNS server in my local network. An internet connection is then only required during installation. If your network does have an internet connection, you can also connect your deployment to Packet Broker. For this, you'll need to know the LoRa Alliance net ID of your network and the device address prefixes within that net ID if you're just leasing a block of addresses from a net ID. You'll also need a Packet Broker API key. We will be installing the ThinkStack Enterprise, so you'll need an Enterprise License Key. You can also do the installation without a license key and configure it later. To install the Raspberry Pi operating system, first go to the Raspberry Pi website and download the Raspberry Pi Imager. After you start the Raspberry Pi Imager, select the Raspberry Pi OS Lite. If you prefer to work with a desktop environment, you can also select the recommended Raspberry Pi OS but then the installation will look a little bit different than what I'm going to show you in this session. Now select the SD card and click Write. You may have to enter your password, but when that's done, it starts writing the Raspberry Pi OS to your SD card. When it's finished, take the SD card and slide it into your Raspberry Pi. The first time you power on your Raspberry Pi, it may restart a couple of times but eventually you'll see the login prompt. Now I'm going to configure Wi-Fi and enable SSH so that I can log into the Raspberry Pi from my Mac and copy paste some commands instead of having to type everything myself. Let's log in with username Pi and password Raspberry. Then let's run sudo raspyconfig to start the configuration tool. First, we'll set up Wi-Fi. Go to System Options and then Wireless LAN. Find and select your country in the list. Then enter the SSID of your Wi-Fi network and the password. Next is SSH. Go to Interface Options and then SSH. Yes, we want to enable the SSH server. And of course, we'll remember to change the password of the Pi user. Now we press tab and select finish to reboot the Raspberry Pi. When you see the login prompt again, you'll now also see a line that says, my IP address is, and then your IP address. In my case, it's 192.168.178.43. I'm now back on my Mac and I'm going to use SSH to log into the Raspberry Pi. We'll type SSH Pi at 192.168.178.43 and press enter. Yes, we're sure that we want to connect. Then we enter the password. If you didn't already change it, it's still Raspberry. Let's first make sure everything is up to date. We run app get update and app get upgrade. This is going to take some time but when it's finished, we'll install Docker. For the Docker installation, I'll mostly follow the Debian instructions on the Docker website. 
We first download Docker's GPG key, then we add their apps repository. Again, we app get update. And now we'll app get install the Docker components. I'm also going to install Docker Compose. When this is all done, we're going to make sure our Py user can run Docker containers. We create the Docker group, which apparently already exists. Then we add the current user to that group and load it. Now, if we run Docker PS, we should not get any errors. Next, we'll install the thing stack. We're going to create a directory where we can keep all the files. We'll then download the example docker compose file and make some changes for our specific deployment. I'll put everything in slash app slash the thing stack. But if you want to put it somewhere else, perhaps on an SSD that you attach to your Raspberry Pi, that's fine too. This is how we download the example docker compose file from the documentation site, and then we'll open it for editing. First, we'll change the version to three because the docker compose version that we just installed doesn't like 3.7. We will comment out everything that mentions CockroachDB because Cockroach doesn't have multi-architecture Docker images yet, so it won't work on your Raspberry Pi. Instead, we'll uncomment PostgreSQL. We want to use Postgres 12, Redis 6, and the thing stack 3.13.0. We'll also comment out anything related to TLS, because we'll not use that in this deployment. Now we can download Postgres, Redis, and the thing stack by running Docker Compose pool. With that done, it's time to configure the thing stack. For the host name, you can use the IP address of the Raspberry Pi, but I prefer to use domain names, so I set up demo.thethingsconference.com in the DNS server in my local network. We'll generate random secrets for the console and for the device claiming server. I like to keep network-wide options in the config file and cluster-specific options in the environment. So we'll create an empty config file that we'll edit later, and we set up some environment variables for our cluster. I'll first have the thing stack write a full list of environment variables to a file and then I'll create an empty file so that we can cherry pick the environment variables that we want to override. First, we're going to disable the TLS listeners. We search for listen TLS and replace those addresses with an empty string. Then we search for the public TLS addresses and clear those out too. Next, we're going to change all local host addresses to our hostname. We'll start with the MQTT ports that run on port 1881, 2, and 3. Our HTTP server runs on port 80, so in addition to changing localhost or hostname, we can also remove that 1885. Then there are some options that use HTTPS, WSS, or MQTTS. There we remove the S and change the 888 to 188. We'll also write the OAuth client secrets to the environment file. And for the HTTP cookie secrets, we'll just write some random values. Finally, we'll write our license key for the ThingStack enterprise. Now we have to quickly remove the quotes from the environment file because Docker Compose doesn't like those. We don't need this file anymore. And before we continue, let's take a quick look at the environment file to make sure everything is right. This looks good to me, but we still need to make Docker Compose aware of this environment file. Let's go back to the Docker Compose file, find the environment of the stack, and set our environment file as env file. If your local deployment is not completely disconnected from the public internet, it's also nice to connect it to Packet Broker, 
As I said before, we will write some options in the config file and some others in the environment file. In the config file, we'll write the options that we would reuse in a different cluster that we might want to add to our network. And in the environment file, we'll add the environment for this specific cluster. Let's start with the config file. We'll create a PBA section for the packet broker agent where we will configure the data plane address. We're using the net ID of the things industries and our tenant ID is HTTPVisor Edge. We'll enable our deployment as a forwarder and as a home network. Next, we'll tell the gateway server to forward all traffic to both the local cluster and to packet broker. And we need to configure the network server to issue device addresses from our net ID and our device address prefix. In the environment file, we need to add our cluster ID. The client ID is the key ID of our packet broker API key, and the client secret is the secret key. Okay, now we can go and initialize the thing stack. We're going to initialize the database, create a tenant, an admin user, and OAuth clients for the command line interface, the console, and the device claiming server. Here's how we initialize the database of the identity server. Then we create the default tenant for our deployment. Now we create the admin user. It asks us to enter a password and to repeat it. Next is the OAuth client for the command line interface, the OAuth client for the console, and the OAuth client for the device claiming server. And with that done, it's time to start the thing stack. We run Docker Compose up and we watch the logs. Here we can see that the thing stack is setting up the different components. And now it's ready listening for connections. We can also see some packet broker traffic coming in already. Now let's see how we can access the console of our local deployment. In my browser, I'm going to demo.thingsconference.com, but if I hadn't set up DNS, that would have been the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. I'm going to log in as the admin user that I just created, also with the password that I just entered. Okay, that works. Now let's see how to configure the command line interface for this deployment. I'll open a new tab in my terminal. So this is now on my Mac, not the SSH session to the Raspberry Pi. We type TTI LWCLI use demo.thethingsconference.com and we set the gRPC port to 1884. We have to make two more changes to make sure that the CLI connects without TLS. So let's open up the config file for editing. Here we need to change HTTPS to HTTP. And here we need to set insecure to true. Okay, now let's try to log in. We type TTI LW CLI login. This will automatically open my web browser. And since I'm already logged in, it doesn't ask for my username and password again. It immediately tells me that the CLI successfully got an access token. I can now close my browser window and back in the terminal, I'll see that the CLI indeed got that access token. And that's how you install and configure a local deployment of the thing stack on a Raspberry Pi. Now you can register some gateways and end devices and connect them to your local deployment. With the packet broker integration, your local network can now also connect to your tenant on the ThingStack cloud and contribute coverage to the ThingStack community edition. You can see the packet broker documentation for more information on that.
So thank you for watching and good luck with your own deployments if you're going to try this yourself. Enjoy the rest of the conference.